We received this phone call from my son's phone, but it wasn't my son. It wasn't Mike. It was um, a nurse who actually called us from the scene and advised us that Mike had been in a, a motorcycle accident. We got a call uh, from MyCom indicating that there had been a motorcycle accident and that the motorcyclist had collided with multiple mailboxes and then had been thrown about 100 feet from the motorcycle. The paramedics had rushed there, put a breathing tube in, put some IVs in, and then transported him to the hospital. His CT showed a, uh, a severe head injury. He had uh, some, uh, some multiple areas of bleeding in the brain. Um, as well as uh, some subarachnoid hemorrhage, as well as a cervical fracture. Uh, so we did a procedure called a ventriculostomy, where a, uh, a, um, a hole is, is um, uh, put into the skull, and through the hole we put a, a small um, uh, catheter, uh, and through the catheter we can measure the pressures of the brain, and also if the pressures are high, we can relieve some of the spinal fluid and, and uh, mitigate that high pressure. We were concerned about his prognosis, uh, whether or not he would, he would frankly make it, and then if, if he did make it, what kind of neurological problems he would have. The first few weeks in the ICU, he was unconscious. Um, due to his injuries, we had to keep him uh, pretty sedated. We weren't really able to have any interactions with him until uh, you know, a good four weeks in when we were finally able to uh, have him come out of that coma. Unfortunately, Michael had a very bad pneumonia, and that pneumonia was a struggle for all of us. We had to perform what's called a tracheostomy on him, which is where the tube that's in his mouth, which helps him get oxygenation and ventilation, had to be replaced to the one uh, where it's surgical into his neck directly. The following week, it, things were not getting any better. He required this special proning bed to see if we would make any difference. Once a patient is that sick uh, and they require that type of bed, they become very unstable. In order to get them to that point, you know, you need to keep them sedated on medications, chemically paralyzed so they don't move and fight the ventilator and just can take what we're giving them to help oxygenate him, basically. During the time I was taking care of him, it was unsure what he was gonna do. And then I came back around and I couldn't believe he was off the ventilator, he was awake. I knew when I saw him in that state that he was gonna have a great recovery. Now, young people have the capacity to make these recoveries. Had he been older, you know, the outcome might have been quite different. I think definitely age, health status has a uh, big deal and I think the intensive care that he got in the surgical ICU makes a big difference. The team approach to care from the trauma room, ICU, and 3 North. The attendings that were working with Mike uh, throughout his whole stay were just, they were go-getters, they wouldn't give up. They were exercising every possibility um, and every test that was available to them. Uh, the nursing staff that I work with and the physician assistants and the surgeons, absolutely everybody is such a solid team. Everyone knows the next step of their coworkers, and um, I think it makes a really big difference. Every time there were blood gases taken, I wanted to know what those numbers were and I charted everything. She would jot down notes, she would ask uh, questions, she really added value to rounds and, and she was an extraordinary and a full member of the team. The care that Mike received at Hackensack University Medical Center was second to none. The respect with which the doctors and nurses treated one another, treated Michael, treated the family, um, the friends, was unsurpassed. From what I hear, they didn't know what deficits I was going to have, if I was going to be able to walk, talk, eat, think right. Incredible is an understatement. I don't even have words for it. It was a miracle. They did bring me back to life. 